Hello and welcome to Coastal Eye Associates training video. This film has been created to help teach or reinforce the techniques and methods needed to obtain an accurate and pertinent workup before the physician sees the patient. So let's get started. The information process begins when the patient is called into the exam room. The technician should do a brief assessment of the patient's face and body. Does the patient have a droopy lid? Is he or she not able to walk without assistance to the exam room? Does the patient seem to be paralyzed on one side? Once in the exam room, the conversational assessment begins, which should lead into a discussion of the presenting problem, chief complaint, or reason for the visit. Make sure to question and document the different elements of the chief complaint, like location, what is the site of the pain or discomfort? Is it bilateral or unilateral? The quality. What is the source of the pain? Is it constant, acute, chronic, improving or worsening? The severity. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the worst. Duration. How long has the patient had the signs or symptoms? Timing. Is the problem worse in the morning or evening? or is it constant throughout the day? Context. Is it associated with any activity? Modifying factors. What effort has the patient made to improve the problem? Applying heat? Artificial tears? Are there any associated signs or symptoms that occur along with this problem? If the patient has multiple complaints, document them in the order of importance. The conversation continues with a review of the patient's medical history, medications, and review of systems. The medical information or review of systems may assist with determining appropriate questions to ask the patient. The technician should be familiar with potential visual complaints associated with medical conditions and medications. For instance, a hypertensive patient should be asked if their blood pressure is under control and how long have they had high blood pressure. Patients should be asked about floaters in their vision, blacked out areas in their vision, a fog or veil over their vision, decreased vision, sudden loss of vision, vision blackouts that come and go, double vision, loss of peripheral vision, and headaches. After a thorough history of chief complaints and review of systems is achieved, the preliminary examination begins with obtaining the patient's visual acuity. Visual acuity should be checked with the patient wearing their glasses or contact lenses. The patient should be handed the occluder and asked to hold it over their left eye to measure the visual acuity in the right eye. The patient will read the letters on the monitor at distance and the vision will be recorded for the appropriate eye. Then the patient will be asked to switch the occluder to the right eye and the process will be repeated. The patient will be asked to again cover their left eye so near vision can be measured. The patient will read from the reading card and the visual acuity will be recorded for each eye separately. The technician should check the patient's vision at distance and near on every patient at every visit. Next, a confrontational visual field should be conducted to screen for any possible interference in the nerve pathway from the eye to the brain. The technician will ask the patient to cover one eye and stare at the technician. The technician will then move their hand out of the patient's visual field and then bring it back in. The patient signals to the examiner when the hand comes into their view. After this, an assessment of pupils will be done, checking the size, shape, and equality of the pupils along with the reaction of the pupillary reflexes, taking extra care to rule out any relative afferent pupillary defect or Marcus Gunn. Pupillary reflexes are assessed by direct and indirect light reflexes and with a swinging light test. If any abnormalities are detected, make sure to bring this to the physician's attention before instilling any dilating drops. 
Following this, an examination of the extraocular muscles should be conducted to check for any strabismus, paralysis of ocular muscles, or gaze paresis. The evaluation should include a cover-uncover test and the six cardinal directions of gaze. If necessary, the technician will carry out an assessment of the color vision by utilizing Ishihara color plates. The technician will have the patient occlude one eye at a time and show the patient each plate individually. Reading corrections should be worn if needed. Next, the intraocular pressure should be measured using the Goldman applanation tonometer. The technician will instill a numbing drop mixed with fluorescein. The tonometer tip should be cleaned with alcohol and dried with the tissue and the patient will be brought up to the slit lamp. Swing the tonometer into proper position, applanate the cornea, focus on the Myers, and record the pressure. The intraocular pressure should be measured before dilation. While the patient is positioned in front of the slit lamp, use this opportunity to evaluate the angle structure and the depth of the anterior chamber before the use of dilation drops. Lastly, if ordered by the physician, instill the appropriate dilation drops and ask the patient to have a seat in the waiting area while dilation occurs so that the physician can complete the exam. This is our visual field machine. It's also known as a Humphrey visual field analyzer. This machine checks your patient's peripheral vision to monitor their glaucoma. When you walk the patient into the room, you want to have them take a seat in the chair. And then you'll explain to the patient how the test is going to be done. You'll place a shield over one eye. You'll hand them the remote control and explain to them they're going to push the button on the remote control every time they see a flashlight. The whole time they need to focus on the center orange light. You'll need to explain to the patient that this test can take about 7 to 10 minutes per eye. To begin the test, you'll select the button to begin test. It'll then ask the patient to stare in the center of four orange lights. Ask them to press the button every time they see the white flash of light in the center of the four orange lights. Once that is done, you'll then need to do the centration. At this point, they're just going to stare straight ahead at the orange light. After that is done, the machine will ask you to proceed with the test. Go ahead and press OK. Tell the patient the test has begun. While the patient is taking the test, you'll notice that the dots on the screen turn into numbers. You want to watch for any movement of the eye, excessive blinking, or patients can sometimes fall asleep during this test. Just be a cheerleader for them. Let them know they're doing well. Continue to monitor the screen. This encourages the patient to do the test as best as they can. Once the test is over, You'll see a screen pop up and say the test is finished and asks you if you would like to save the test. Press save. Once done, you'll press test other eye. Once you've selected test other eye, you're going to repeat the same steps as you did for the first eye. Once the test is completed, then you are done. You may print the test and place it in the chart under the appropriate tab. You may walk your patient back down to the exam room for the doctor to review the test with the patient. Now we're going to use the fundus camera. When you walk the patient into the room, have them take a seat in the chair and just relax for a few minutes. You'll need to put the patient information into the machine. Once you're done, you'll hit Acquire Images. 
it's going to ask if you really want to capture for the patient that's on the computer screen. Say yes and proceed. You'll then have the patient place their chin on the chin rest and you're going to direct them to look at the orange colored light in the center of the camera. Once you're in focus, you'll need to turn knobs and a few buttons to focus it in. You're going to go inside the eye by pressing the square button. At this point, they're going to see a green light. Have them focus on that green light. Once you're focused and you can see the optic nerve clearly, you may take your picture. Once the picture is complete, review it. If you like it, you may proceed to the next eye. You're going to repeat the steps on the second eye as you did for the first eye. Once you are done, print out your pictures, place them in the chart under the appropriate tab. Now you can walk your patient back down to the exam room to have the doctor review the test with them. Now you're going to perform an OCT test. This is also known as an ocular coherence tomography. This test will measure the patient's optic nerve, retina, and macula. You need to make sure to check with your doctor what test they want done. You'll walk the patient into the room, have them take a seat in the chair, and wait for just a minute so you can put their information in. Once the information is in the machine, you'll instruct your patient to come forward to the chin rest, forehead nice and tight against the head rest. Now they're going to focus on a green star. Have them look directly in the center of that green star. At this point, you're going to hit the button Optimize. This will bring everything into focus. Once you're happy with your image, you're going to ask the patient to blink several times and then press Capture. Ask them to hold it, do not blink, don't move. Once it's done, you'll review the picture. If you're happy with it, you'll hit save. Once you hit save, it will automatically have you switch to the other eye. Proceed with the same steps as the first eye. Once you're happy with that, you can hit save. Now you're done. Hit finish. It'll have the patient's name highlighted and you want to click analyze. Once you hit Analyze, it will take you to the review screen. Select your test from the top of the screen for the eye that you did. Then you'll hit Print, and you'll repeat that for the second eye. Once done, you can take your printouts and place them in the chart behind the appropriate tab. Now you can take your patient back to the exam room to have the doctor review the test with them. A well-trained and knowledgeable technician will be able to perform thorough and complete patient workups, including all the necessary preliminary testing and documentation of the patient's chief complaint, medical history, and review of systems. This allows for efficient use of both the patient's and the physician's time in determining treatment and or diagnosis. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact your supervisor. Thank you for watching this training video.